What's good? How your day going? Actually, how your morning going? Like, no cap. It's legit 12 o'clock right now. No cap, bro. It is freaking 12.30 a.m. And this thumbnail, it, it does low-key look hella creepy. I'm, I'm not even going to lie to you, dude. <laughs> but check out 10 Terrifying True ten terrifying true Scary Stories by me by the homie Mr. Nightmare. Why don't you check out the video? Link will be in the description below. But let's go. There was a brief period of time that I lived alone. When I freshly moved out of my parents' house and before I met my girlfriend and she moved in, I lived in a small one-bedroom apartment in the downstairs of someone else's house. I spent a lot of time alone during this period of my life besides when I was at school or work, and so I spent a lot of my time watching movies. Specifically, I liked watching scary movies pretty often. Even as an at the time 21-year-old guy, I still would be a little spooked trying to sleep after watching a scary movie especially living alone in that apartment, and every time I did, I would look around the room. At a few points, I would even turn the bedside lamp on just to check around the room. The tenant upstairs wasn't home that night, as his car wasn't in the driveway, so the sounds I was hearing couldn't have been footsteps upstairs or anything like that. My nerves were really starting to set in at one point because I just kept hearing noises, and to be honest, I couldn't tell from where in the house they were coming from. I got up to head over to the door of the bedroom and opened it. Outside of my bedroom was a very narrow hallway, which had a door to the bathroom, and then at the end of the hallway opened up to the living room. At the end of this hallway though, like a scene right out of the movie I had watched not even an hour earlier, there was someone standing at the far end of the hallway right by the kitchen. The moonlight from outside coming into the bedroom windows and the windows in the living room was enough to see her, this woman looking right back at me. She started to walk backwards while still facing me. Oh, hell no. I didn't no. care, though. I still screamed and backed into my room before <laughs> slamming the door shut and locking it. She didn't come running over and pounding on the door or anything like that. Instead, I heard running up the half flight of stairs to the exit of my apartment, and then the door slammed shut. You in the basement, too. That means ain't no windows. You stuck in that damn room. Shut. I was frozen in shock for like 10 minutes before I felt okay to take my phone and leave the bedroom to check the apartment. It didn't take long, it was a small apartment with not many hiding places. It was empty. I rushed to lock the door, wondering who that could have been and how I'd they got in. I'd have been done that. I didn't call the police, I couldn't tell you why. But the next day, I called the landlord and told him about it. He made a phone call to the upstairs tenant, and what I learned shocked me. The woman that broke into my apartment was an ex-lover of the man who lived upstairs. A crazy one at that. And after finding his address somehow, she broke into the wrong part of the house. My apartment. The upstairs tenant came down to my door and apologized to me that following day, <laughs> but I never got much detail. My bad by my uh, baby mama, bro. She she be tripping and shit coming through. That ain't even my baby. <laughs> bro, I, at first I thought he was gonna say like it was somebody, like he was gonna let him know like, yo, I saw this woman woo woo and he's like, hey bro, no, nah, that person later died or something like that, whatever. Cause he said she was walking backwards with her head turned or something, right? Tell from him or the landlord. I still wonder what that woman was planning on doing to him. She saw it wasn't him. Anonymous. I'm not a fan of my dad's girlfriend at all. Not from the start. Her name is Kathy. My dad has been widowed since 2019 when our mom died. And I know he's gotten lonely and he's pretty much ready to settle with anybody now. Even Kathy. And against my warnings, he doesn't listen. I've been seeing her do some sketchy things around the house and it's really starting to freak me out now. I'll start from the beginning. I have two siblings my 10-year-old brother Jake, and my two-year-old brother Scotty. From the day he introduced her to us, Jake I didn't Scotty. like something about her smile. It was just unsettlingly wide and exaggerated. Pretty soon he'd start bringing her around a lot more, and I just never loved her honestly. But at first it was only because I felt something was off about her personality. Mm -hmm. Then things started happening. She's been staying with us for a while now, and a few weeks ago, I caught her in my dad's closet while he wasn't home. My dad's safe is in his closet, along with where oh. he hides the combination and some other valuables. When she saw me at the doorway, she smiled and said, hey, what's up, sweetie, to me, with her annoying, creepy smile. I didn't say anything other than nothing. Then she shut his closet door, and I walked away to my room. I told my dad about it, but he didn't seem concerned. A few no shit, because he horny as hell, dog. 
She probably putting that little meow on him. He don't know what to do. You, like you say, he been with her forever. It's crazy. My like, boy, stop thinking. Stop thinking with that head. Say anything other than nothing. Then she shut his closet door, and I walked away to my room. I told my dad about it, but he didn't seem concerned. A few days after that, while my dad was at work again, I just got back from school, and I was walking upstairs to my room. And as I was, I saw Kathy leave my little brother Jake's room and shut the door behind her. I asked her what she was doing in his room. She smiled and said, I was just opening the window, it's hot in the house. I didn't answer and walked up to my room. When I heard her go downstairs eventually, I snuck. My bad, that she was catching my eye. Boy, that, is that really, boy, you get 20% off. Where's that at? Go back, hold on. Because it looked like appliances and shit. Yeah. My bad, go back. It was just a, a, a dot with me. It was like looking at that. I'm sorry. I didn't answer and walked up to my room. It's pretty good. When I heard her go downstairs eventually, I snuck to Jake's room to check if she actually had opened the window. And both windows were shut. Something was up with this lady, and I knew it. And I still know it. I told my dad again, and in response, he asked me to just please be patient with the situation and that he knows I don't care for Kathy. Alright, bro, I told you. Jake. Fast forward to two days ago. Jake, my dad, and I were all not home, and Kathy was babysitting Scotty. I came home unannounced, but I wanted to be secretive about it because I wanted to see if I could catch her doing anything again. Uh -huh. I snuck into the house and went to my room quietly. Eventually, from the kitchen downstairs, I started to hear Scotty crying. Not regular crying, like a very distressed kind of crying. And I heard Kathy screaming at the top of her lungs to shut the F up. It was the first time I heard her raise her voice, and I believe it was the first time I was hearing her true colors come out. I ran downstairs to yell at her to leave my brother alone. She was startled and shocked that I was home. And for the first time, she didn't give me her creepy smile. Cause you she caught looked her. at me blankly and went downstairs and shut the door. I called my dad and told him right away, and that night, my dad had a conversation with her about it. I don't know how it went, but I assume not good, because that night, I woke up in the middle of the night to something, and looked up into my room. There was someone in my room, and they quickly left the room and shut the door behind them. I got out of bed and opened my door, and as I got into the hall, I saw and heard my dad's bedroom door close. I went over to my dad's room and opened the door, and both Kathy and my dad were laying in the bed. I woke my dad up furiously and told him Kathy was just in my room. She denied the whole thing saying she was in bed. I don't know if my dad believed me or not, but he told me no. to go back to my room and he'd talk with Kathy. I obeyed and I heard them whispering as I shut the door. I went back to bed and I was scared. I'm still scared. I want her out of the house and out of our lives. I think she's dangerous. Why? My bad. I just I hate when it be like those situations where the kid do the only thing they can do. I mean, they're freaking powerless. Freaking warning the dog over and over and over. And then finally it's too late. Now everybody want to boo-hoo and cry like we should have done this. I, I hate stuff like that. As I shut the door, I went back to bed and I was scared. I'm still scared. I want her out of the house and out of our lives. I think she's dangerous. I'm going my kid wrong. Why was she in my room? It's freaking me out. I worry for my family's well-being and I don't know what we can do. Oh, that's it? So that I mean that story's still going on? This one goes back a few years ago to when I was 30 years old. I was at my condo in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. My condo, which I still own, is on the second floor of a decently nice building that I won't name for privacy reasons. Whenever I go down there, it's in the colder months up north, and I'm a complete beach bum when I go down there. Luckily for me, I work remotely from my job through my laptop and phone, so I've been able to retreat down there whenever I'd like. Fort Lauderdale is for the most part a pretty clean and safe city, and the specific- Y'all hear that humming? What the hell is that? Like, Fort Lauderdale is for the most- My bad, I can't pay attention because I'll hear ooh. Top and phone, so I've been able to retreat down there whenever I'd like. Fort Lauderdale is for the most part a pretty clean and safe city, and the specific location my building is in is no exception. That is, usually. It was the middle of January. It was late at night, past 10 o'clock. I was out on my balcony with my feet over the railing, on my laptop, when all of a sudden I heard from down below on the ground someone yelling something. They were yelling, yo, and hey you. At first I didn't move, hear taking you. the assumption that whoever it was was talking to someone else. They couldn't possibly be calling up to me, but they followed with, hey you up there, and my heart skipped a beat because now I knew they were talking to me, 
My main question was, why? I set my laptop down on the chair and looked over the railing down to the ground below. There was a guy in front of a car in the parking lot, looking up at me, and he said, yeah, you. I asked, what's up? He told me to come down there so he could show me something cool. I took a better look at this guy, some guy with a backwards hat and tank top on. I assumed he was just some punky kid messing with me, so I ignored him and sat back down. When I did that, I heard him laughing as he said, I'm gonna come up there and skin you alive, you prick. I stood up again and looked at him. He had this unsettling and sinister smile on his face. I realized he looked older than I initially thought. He wasn't some kid. I literally opened my mouth to shout something back at him, but for some reason, I didn't bother. I grabbed my laptop and went inside and shut the sliding door. <laughs> I expected him to yell up a couple things afterwards, but I didn't hear Bro, him he do so. To that room. <laughs> as uncomfortable as that made me, I felt much safer being inside. I chalked it up to just the occasional coked up Florida lunatic. I, I would have too, but if you said that, like, bro, I'm about to come there and skin your ass like, hell no, boy. 911, <laughs> what y'all niggas doing? Cause, hey, look, bro. <laughs> Mal called the boy, stop playing with me, do I? Because obviously, you ain't got, it sound like you ain't got no weapon there. A lot of these stories, I guess people just don't like guns at all. Maybe you don't. I don't know. I'm not judging you for what you do. But, but I'm up there. I got my shit ready. Because the only because it's an apartment, the only way you can come up there is to the door. You ain't about to climb up that mug. But if you ain't got nothing, yeah, I'm calling. The, I'm gonna call them boys. Like, yeah, hey, y'all got y'all gotta watch. Get my man. Much safer being inside. I chalked it up to just the occasional coked up Florida lunatic on the streets. But things became next level when the silence of the room was broken by pounding on my condo door. Told you. Accompanied with a voice yelling obscenities and threats at me, it was the guy again. The bangs were so loud, I was genuinely concerned he was going to break the door down. All I could do was yell, I'm calling the police. That didn't phase him. His bangs turned to these carving and stabbing noises. It probably all lasted for about a minute or two, but felt like a century until he gave one more loud angry bang, screamed one more obscenity at me, then left. I knew because I checked through the peephole. I called the police after the ordeal just there you to show go. them and report it to them. On the other side of the door, there were several stab marks in it. Confirming I did hear him stabbing at it and confirming this man had a knife. I pray nobody was harmed that night. I doubt he knew me. I think he was just a really drugged out crazy person looking to hurt someone. Mm. That's my peach. They must be blood. I once spent a night in jail. I know everyone <laughs> says it, but I didn't do <laughs> Mr. Nerver, you can't say that after I just said that shit? Hey, chill out. Stop being racist. Don't, don't come over here with that. Don't come over here with that, dog. Not all black. We don't, hey, I only been three times. <laughs> I ain't never been to prison, though. I once spent a night in jail. I know everyone says it, but I didn't do shit. I was attacked <laughs> by a bouncer at a nightclub in my hometown because some girl who I had history with was there, and she had the nerve to lie Baby to mama. a bouncer and tell him I was touching her and her friends inappropriately when I never even said a word to them. The bouncer came and put his hands on me and started pushing me out of the club, and honestly, I pushed back in my drunken state. And of course, cops were outside the bar. And between a drunk guy and a club bouncer, who are they gonna side with? Well, mm -hmm. I end up handcuffed True. in the back of a cop car, and I'm escorted to jail, where I spent the night. All that was in this cell was one wooden bar for sitting on, and this other guy besides me. He asked what I'm in for, and I told him for bullshit. I took one look at the guy and I knew I didn't belong here. He had tattoos on his face, he was missing a front tooth, and he just had this face that said, don't mess with me or I'll cap you. I didn't want to rub him the wrong way, so I just tried talking with him if he talked to me. At one point, I did open up to him a bit just because of my anger at the situation and I needed to vent. During this time, I told him some delicate info, like where I was from, which is definitely the nicer side of town. I told him how I had people over that night since my parents were away, and we all pre-gamed and went to the club. I basically told him the rundown of the whole night. Since I was drunk, I wanted to just try and sleep, but he'd keep talking to me and it was getting annoying. Eventually, I think he caught on and shut up. The next morning, we had to go to court because, yes, sadly I was charged with assault and trespassing. Mm -hmm. Two bogus charges. Damn. My cellmate had to go too. Hey, them judges don't even let you talk, neither, bruh. I had one so straight to the point, 
He asked questions. Duh, 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 duh. I tried to give an explanation. He said yes or no. He asked questions again. I tried to give an explanation. He said yes or no. I was like yes. He said duh, duh, duh. I was like yes. Duh, duh, duh. Yes. Boom. Hit the guy. I was like, oh damn. <laughs> you got to pay. <laughs> I was like, damn, dog. Hey, but them wholesales don't even be like that, dog. The movies be making it seem like, but I, I ain't gonna say that because I don't know where you from. I don't know. But it must be cold, I tell you that. But it don't be that. It was at least, it wasn't nothing like that. It was like, you go in that mud, they call your mama, your mama come get you. But my mama was late to come get me, no cap. And we was like down the street, no cap. I, even, even the guard, uh, the guard, even the police dude that locked me up, he even said, he was like, do your mama not care about you? And he was, he, don't worry about it, I ain't gonna say nothing else. But my mom was like, 30 minutes later, I was in that much cold as shit, like, dog, this book. The next morning, we had to mm. go to court because, yes, sadly, I was charged with assault and trespassing. Two bogus charges. My cellmate had to go, too. I saw the judge before him, though. He was one of the other offenders in the back of the court listening to my charges. I was released with a future court date set. A complete nightmare. But that night, when I was at home, and all the windows were open so I heard everything from outside, I was hearing footsteps circling the house. Yes, I do. Multiple sets of footsteps. I started to shut all my windows one by one on the first floor. Then I got to the backyard door, which is a sliding glass door looking out to the deck. I curiously flicked on the deck light. And immediately, two dudes ran out from the light into the darkness. I recognized one of them to be my cellmate. Told you. I closed the blind to the door and continued closing the rest of the windows. I couldn't believe he found me, but he was obviously there to rob our house blind after I told him how my parents were away. He must have seen dollar signs when I- That's why you that's why you're wearing your mouth so damn much. And the crazy part is when you was in the wholesale with him, I'm thinking like, why, why are you telling this dude all this stuff, do I? But you think he was asking the story because he's a good guy? Cause he want to get to know your goofy ass. You probably told him you live in a nice big ass house too. <laughs> he probably was like, word. Straight up, yeah. Mom's out of town, okay. I continued closing the rest of the windows. I couldn't believe he found me, but he was obviously there to rob our house blind after I told him how my parents were away. He must have seen dollar signs when I told him the side of town I was in. See? He probably heard my name called in the courtroom, and one quick Google search of my simple name turned up my address. The two dudes took off, I believe, because I didn't hear from them the rest of the night. I never told my parents I was arrested, and because of that, I never told them about how my cellmate <laughs> almost came and robbed our house. You... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, you're not just, you're just not that bright, dog. Boy, if you if you live with me and, and you get arrested and the same dude you arrested with tried to break into my house, man, if you don't tell me, dog. My cellmate almost came and robbed her. That house. shit dangerous as hell. I'm walking around at night taking trash out. Don't even know these dudes might, might come back. Anna Maria Lucio is like Overwatch. This is something that just happened to me, and I don't know how to feel about it other than freaked out. I'm not a spiritual person at all. I've been on and off seeing this guy named Spencer. I met him through a co-worker one night when we were out together at a bar, and we hit it off. I finally introduced him to my family, and while my parents were indifferent about him, my grandparents didn't really care for him, my grandma especially. They both said they saw something bad in him, that he doesn't seem like a good guy. My grandma, mostly. This wasn't after one time meeting, though. This was after I brought him around multiple times, and everyone could get a good idea about him. And honestly, I started to see what they meant because Spencer and I would get into constant arguments and he would lose his temper fairly easy on me. Mm -hmm. For this, we'd be on and off constantly. There was one night that I felt like he was about to raise his hands to me, but he held back and then calmed down. This was when I said, I'm done. Yep, still a red him. flag, go. Or so I thought I was going to. My grandma was especially happy and said I could do much better. Then she went on. It was crazy, Mr. Ballin video we just watched yesterday how we was talking about these toxic relationships and how, how it get. It's crazy how we, it's not like we had two of these so far. Like, I don't get it. Just let people go, dog. It's simple. I was going to. My grandma was especially happy and said I could do much better. Then she went on about how I should go find a nice Italian boy from a nice family like she always did. Oh, good. Anyway, not long after this, my grandma died of a heart attack. Mm. During my grieving, I hung a picture of my grandma up on my wall in my room to commemorate her. This was only oh. a month ago. I had been having a horrible month. And out of weakness, when Spencer reached out to me two weeks ago, 
I answered, and we saw each other. We had been seeing each other every night these past two weeks. Told you they always end up. I really thought he had changed because we had. They always end up back together. Fucking toxic shit. Spencer reached out to me two weeks ago. I answered, and we saw each other. We had been seeing each other every night these past two weeks, and I really thought he had changed because we hadn't argued a single time, and I just felt safe around him. Well, only a few days ago, Spencer and I agreed to be official boyfriend and girlfriend, and that night, I woke up to a crash in my room. I panicked and flicked on the lamp, and it took me a moment to notice the picture of my grandma wasn't on the wall anymore. I got up and saw the frame had fallen to the floor and cracked. The picture frame I hung of my grandma had fallen and cracked on the night I agreed to date Spencer. I held the frame in my hand, my heart in my throat, my whole body shaking. I called Spencer the next day and told him I think we should go our separate ways for a while, as my head isn't in the right place. And he blew up on the phone in anger, and that phone call proved my grandma was right about him. But that picture frame falling and breaking, what could have caused it? There was no draft mm -hmm. in the room. Even as I imagined that it was somehow a sign for my grandma, do you realize how freaking scary that is? Yup, that is. There's grandma telling your hard-headed ass like you don't listen to shit. Real talk though. I'm telling you, man, if you can get out of them toxic toxic relationships early, if you notice the red flag, leave it early before you get all wrapped up. I know, I know how it be when you fresh new fresh new in a relationship. It feel good. You got butterflies. Ah, do your best. Do change. Hey, one thing is you should never tell yourself so is that person to change. People will not. No, they won't. Trust me. They 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 may adjust a little bit to make you happy, but trust me, you always you always go back to your ways. You always do. See, I ain't want to do it, but now I'm about to preach to your ass. Look, real talk, though. Not even being funny, though. For real, though. But if you learn to legit put, like, love yourself first, like, put yourself before anybody. I'm not saying make it sound like you better than everybody. But put you first in your damn life. It's your damn life, shit. It's a little easier when you see them signs. You be like, you know what? It's cool. I was really fucking with you, but it ain't going to work. It's, it's a little easier to do that. But when you don't, when you be looking for, like, Shitting other people to make yourself happy, it ain't gonna work, dog, because they're just gonna run over you and you're gonna let it keep on going, boom, 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 because you like they gonna change. No, they ain't. My bad for preaching to you, but go back. We should go our separate ways for a while, as my head isn't in the right place. And he blew up on the phone in anger, and that phone call proved my grandma was right about him. Mm -hmm. but that picture frame falling and breaking, what could have caused it? There was no draft in the room. Even as I imagine that it was somehow a sign for my grandma, do you realize how freaking scary that is? Hey, this one is good so far, I can't cap. Robbie. I took my Jeep on a road trip to Colorado to do some off-roading in the wilderness. I was doing a bunch of trails in the Red Feather Lakes, and I was ending the night off on the Dead Man's Road Trail. It was a somewhat challenging trail, but the scenery was unbeatable. I packed a sleeping bag and planned on sleeping in the back of my Jeep with the back seats folded down. I pulled somewhere off the immediate trail just off the slight chance some other night drivers would pass by, but that was very unlikely. I guess people can call me a weirdo for enjoying off-roading on my own and camping alone, but I've always liked doing things solo. I use the word camping because I do consider this to just be luxury camping. Instead of being in a tent, I'm in the back of my Jeep in the middle of the woods. I ate some of the protein bars and other snacks I brought as my little dinner. Then I set up my sleeping bag in the back. In case you're wondering if I was doing this in the dark, I had the LED light bar on my Jeep on, which basically lit up the entire surrounding area pretty nicely. So I finally crawl into the sleeping bag, and I'd be lying if I said it's comfortable sleeping back there. It's the price to pay for off-roading in the sunrise for me. I had the windows all closed to avoid bugs getting in, but I still heard everything outside. Mm -hmm. And then it happened. I heard a voice from out in the woods, followed by a short, loud laughter. As deep into the trail I was, there's no way someone was just walking around out there, not in this total darkness. I looked out the windows expecting to see headlights or taillights somewhere, but nope. Then I heard the voice again, much clearer. I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman at first. I was shaking now though. Someone was out there, that much was clear. Though I was hearing a voice, I didn't know what was being said just yet. Well, I'm gone. And I laid there, waiting for it again, scared to death. 
for a while, just crickets. Then, much closer now, I heard in a clear voice, belonging to either a woman or a young boy, Hello, I see you there. Now I was ready to throw up. I wanted to move to the driver's seat and drive, but I was too scared to move. I th and no cap, low key, like when, when you legit get scared like that, it is hard to move in them situations. I ain't no cap and like, and like I'm gonna just boom, hop up, get to the front. I'm gonna try my hardest, but man, when you get scared like that, you legit freeze up like, like, like you can't move. I wanted to move to the driver's seat and drive, but I was too scared to move. I felt like if I just stayed laying down that whoever was out there wouldn't see me. I know that makes no sense, but hiding and not moving was me clinging onto the hope that this wasn't actually happening. Then, there was one loud bang on my rear windshield, and I jumped up and practically dove over the two front seats. <laughs> and, and I started the car and drove as quickly as I could down the trail, scared they were running after me because I could only go so fast on this rocky terrain. I was scared to look in the rearview mirror. But when I did, oh, I yeah, didn't see anyone through the red yeah, cause you can't go that fast there. glow of my taillights. It was a nightmare. I was tired, but drove the rest of the trail until UBI. I was back on pavement. Then I drove for miles until I reached a motel. Some people have asked me, what if it was someone stranded who needed help? Then they should have said I needed help. Don't play with me, dog. I don't care. I reached a motel. Some people have asked me, Shit. what if it was someone stranded who needed help? Should have said. I say no way. No one's out there that late in the pitch black, laughing without a flashlight Facts. that deep on some trail. And they wouldn't bang on my windshield just once like that if they weren't trying to scare me. People are messed up. Always watch your back and be woke to your surroundings. Mm -hmm. I'm hella woke. This is one of the few unexplainable events I've experienced in my life. I was home upstairs in my room, writing my paper for my history class. As far as I knew, I was home alone, but apparently I was mistaken because my mom's voice called out from downstairs, yelling my name. I called back, what? She didn't answer, so slightly annoyed because I didn't want to be interrupted from my train of thought on my paper, I reluctantly got up to go downstairs and see what she wanted. When I got downstairs, I looked around for my mom, but she wasn't anywhere in sight, so I yelled out, mom? and she yelled back my name in response. Her voice came from down in the basement, so I went to the basement door, but strangely the lights were off. I called down the stairs, Mom, again, and she called back. I yelled out, what are you doing down there with the lights off? She didn't respond. I flicked on the light and went down the stairs. I heard my mom call my name again as I was near to the bottom of the steps. It was getting weird. Each time she called my name, it sounded exactly the same. Like there was zero difference in inflection every single time she said my name. I yelled out mom again, and she once again yelled back my name. She was nowhere to be seen in the basement, but then I noticed the little crawl space closet door was open. I call it that because it's a weird closet mm -hmm. that you have to kind of crawl into, but it takes up a large chunk of the basement. That was the only place left in the basement that my mom could be. So fuck that! If my mom ain't there, it's... No! Let, when you come, when you done, you come out, you come upstairs, talk to me. Hell no. Because it's a weird closet that you have to kind of crawl into, but it takes up a large chunk Excuse of the basement. Excuse my French. That was the only place left in the basement that my mom could be. So I said, mom, one final time. No answer this time. I went closer to the closet door and got on my knees just to try and look in. It was pitch black inside and I was starting to get freaked out. I said, mom, are you messing with me? There was no response at all, just the quiet buzzing sound from the basement light. I got back up and for some reason decided to sprint back upstairs, slamming and locking the basement door behind me. I didn't know what I had just witnessed and heard, but I went to grab the house phone and call my mom's cell number. It rang a few times until my mom picked up and I learned that she was out grocery shopping. I told her, but she didn't believe my story, of course. She thought I was messing with her. It took half an hour of begging her to believe me that she finally went along with it. And when she and my dad were both home, we all went down to the basement together. And you still stay home? Boy, that's bullshit. I'd have ran, cleaned out that front door, went to the neighbor's house. Stop playing. Finally went along with it. And when she and my dad were both home, we all went down to the basement together. The closet door was still open. My dad went inside, but there was no one in there. This still remains to be the most haunting, unexplainable experience of my life. What? That, hey, that might be the best one. That's it?
I'm sorry, I was on edge, dog. I was creeped out. Because when he was like, he looked inside, I was like, oh my God, something's about to legit run out of that, bro. And what I think someone probably had a recording of my voice or whatever and was playing it, trying to lure you down there. The fact that you really went down there and went in there, goofy. The unexplainable experience of my life. That shit was hella good, no cap. I was only about nine years old when this happened. I was sleeping over my grandma's house for the weekend, which I often did when I was little. It was a stormy day out, and my grandma was out at the nearby grocery store getting ingredients for dinner. I was in the living room watching Spongebob when the phone hey. rang. There was obviously zero reason for me to answer the phone, but you know, I was a little kid with a little kid brain. There's no explaining any decisions made. I went to the kitchen and picked up the phone, and after my little kid voice said hello into the phone, the man's voice on the other end said, Can I speak to the adult in the house? I said, She's not home. And the voice responded, So you're all alone right now. Uh -oh. I remember I paused for a second, then said, Yeah. Even at my age, I knew after he asked that that mm. it probably wasn't a good idea to have I picked up too. the phone. The person on the other end then asked if the current address he had on file was correct, but I didn't answer that. I hung up the phone, and now I was nervous. I was worried I might have just gotten my grandma in trouble. Nonetheless, I went back to watching Spongebob. Twenty minutes later or so, there was a frantic knocking at the door. I muted the TV and listened. Along with the knocking, someone on the other end cried out, Please help. It was a man. I snuck over to the edge of the wall where the opening for the front door was to take a peek and see if I saw anyone standing on the other side of the door through the glass at the top of the door. That was a mistake, because I did, and they saw me too. The man on the other side of the door immediately said, Little boy, please open the door. I'm hurt bad. I ran to the corner of the room by the window and closed the blinds so I could hide behind the couch. I was so scared. There were no cell phones back then. I couldn't call my grandma. Mm -hmm. The man kept pounding on the door, his cries for help turning more annoyed sounding, and his knocks got louder and more frequent. Then the pounds That's on the weirdo. door stopped, and he started knocking on the window right next to me. The creep started saying things like, I'm not going to hurt you, and please, I'm bleeding bad. I started to cry in the corner, still hiding behind the couch. The pounding stopped finally, and after a minute, I ran to my grandma's room and locked the door. I laid in her bed under the covers with only my head sticking out. The rain hitting the windowsill and the occasional distant thunder was weirdly calming, at least for a little bit. The man on the other side appeared at one of the windows and started trying to lift it open, Thank God all the windows were locked. Oh, good. Now I hid under the covers completely, and I don't think he saw me in there. She. This was the last time I saw or heard that man. 20 minutes later, I heard my grandma come in through the front door. I ran into her arms, crying and apologizing, and told her everything. She of course called the police, and when the officers needed me to give whatever details I could, my grandma called me into the room, and I answered their questions. Then she sent me back off to the guest bedroom to watch TV. Unfortunately, that man was never caught, for this, at least. My grandma never told my parents, and she told me not to tell them either. But she also never left me alone again any time I slept over after that, which wasn't many times. Long story short, I was... <laughs> why do you not tell a parent that? The parents that? Why, why do you not? That's serious as hell. I get... Cause, I, don't, I know why you didn't tell. Because you know you weren't supposed to leave, leave that little boy home. Boy, you know how many times I've been left home, alone... Cause my mom went out to get some ish. I, I be making my mom sound like such a bad person. She not. She was made amazing. But it's like a lot of this. A lot of. A lot of the, the way. Gosh, the way. A lot of people like from her era moved. It it was just like, I don't want to say rough as shit, but it was it was just rough. It was different. It was like, oh, you be aight. It was more of like that mentality. Mentality. Like, I legit remember being in the car, waiting for my mama to come out of save a lot. No, I'd be in the car forever, hot as shit. Like, bro, I'm in elementary school, and they're more, me and my brothers, and they younger than me. Well, I only got one brother. Well, I got one younger brother. I got more. I got multiple brothers. But I got one younger brother and my little sister. And so we just in the car, like, bro, like, I wouldn't dare do that with my kids now. But, again, like, it wasn't, I'm not saying it's because she was a bad parent. It was just. That shit just felt like it was norm then. Like, I used to be all over the city of Flint, dog. And, like, middle school, just riding my bike all over, everywhere. Boy, I only let my daughter ride down. She wouldn't even ride down 
to the next house without me outside. Crazy. My parents, and she told me not to tell them either. But she also never left me alone again anytime I slept over after that, which wasn't many times. Long story short, I was one unlocked door away from undoubtedly being kidnapped. Yep. Joseph Garcia. I'm a father of two kids. They're 15 and 10. My wife was out of the house at the time of this happening. I was in my room taking a nap in the middle of the day. My older son is always in and out all day every day with his friends. So when I heard the front door constantly opening and closing, it didn't concern me. But eventually, when I heard the storm door slam shut for a fourth time, I started to get annoyed and whistled at him to quiet down. I started hearing other loud noises from across the hallway, in the direction of my younger son Keith's room. I imagined he was playing with his wrestling toys or something. Regardless, even with my door shut, the noise got to be too much. It was just like a constant thumping sound. Like, what could Keith possibly be doing? When I went across the hall to his room, the noise became more clear, and it was this literal thumping on the wall sound. I went into his room. The door was already opened. I said Keith's name angrily, but I didn't see my son. I saw some grown man facing the wall, banging his head into the wall. There was blood on the wall from his constant banging. The man gave me a side glance without turning his whole head. I managed to tackle the man to the floor, and that's when Keith emerged from under his sheets where he was hiding. The man didn't fight back. He started yelling the psychotic mumbo-jumbo, proving his lacking sanity. Yep. I told Keith to go get the house phone while I held the man down. After calling the police, I was in that same position for at least five minutes before they arrived. The man just kept smiling and laughing and saying things that made no sense the entire time. The man was ill or on some serious drugs, or both. I didn't press charges, and I'm sure he was taken somewhere to get the help he clearly needed and to get him off the streets. Mm -mm -mm. That one, that one, it wasn't, it wasn't as scary. I, I kind of figured where that one was going. It was cool though. Sirenush, Sirenush, Sirenush. I've had many night terrors in my life, and I've struggled with many sleeping disorders. Hell, I can't even count how many times I've experienced sleep paralysis. It's a truly disturbing thing. I've also woken to seeing spiders and other giant bugs in my bed countless times, for them to only disappear as I start to snap back to reality. But the hallucinations are always so real and vivid, I always find myself jumping out of my bed screaming, throwing pillows at the non-existent bugs, oh. and don't even get me started on the constant nightmares I have. There was one stressful week of school that I was up to my ears in homework with all my classes, and I was admittedly exhausted mentally and physically. With half of my assignments due the next day, which was Friday, I was up extremely late for a school night. It had to be like 3 a.m., and I had to be up in three hours. When I finally finished all of my assignments, I literally crashed into bed, and I was out cold faster than I could remember. And that night, I was having a bad dream again. The best I could describe this bizarre dream, I was for some reason in this linear building that I was trying to escape, and in each passing room, I kept finding candies like it was a Halloween attraction or something. But in the dream, I was running away from something. And the something I was running away from kept laughing. It was a child's laughter. And it sounded like it was coming from everywhere. That sounds creepy. What caused me to wake up was when I made it to what was presumed to be the final door of the building. The laughing was the loudest now. And when I opened the door, I woke up in my bed. I couldn't move. It was happening again. Then there was a laughter from the middle of the room. I moved my eyes to focus to the middle of the room. There were four people standing in the center of the room. Oh my God. Oh! It was like a family, a tall male and female, and then a small boy and girl. They were all holding hands and they were all laughing, looking at me with giant grins on their faces, impossibly wide grins. And as I felt this tight pressure in my chest, which is common in sleep paralysis, I started to feel like they were getting bigger, or just getting close. Man, and we watched a video on sleep paralysis. That shit is so creepy, dog. Some of the stories y'all y'all were telling me, man, I don't know how y'all do it. And, and, and this person sound like a few y'all comments I read. Y'all was like, like yeah, y'all be having them like back to back. Like I had mine, probably had like two, maybe three times in my entire life. But even so, it, it was scary as shit. But it wasn't bad. Like some of y'all, I be reading, I be feeling bad. Like she. 
she said she be waking up seeing things, basically hallucinating, seeing ish that's not there to the point legit that she's seeing it so much that she's throwing pillows at it and having sleep paralysis. Dog, that's scary. Some people until I be I be ah I be feeling bad for them. Like that's bullshit. Like is it? I I don't know what I did. I'm glad I don't have mine anymore. Not to say like ha ha, but it just it because I I know that pain, dude. Like. I told y'all a few times about the dreams I had when I used to, uh, I used to wake up with my girl tell me like she like was worried by one, worried about me at one point like I used to wake up shouting like jumping up ish and I'd be saying something and I and I'd be so scared and I used to hate having those because it hurt dog it, it it hurt not in the way and like ow ouch it hurt in the point where it's painful because you be feeling like you stuck in this and you be knowing you dreaming dog my body getting heated because I hate this feeling. You be knowing that it's bullshit. This is not real. I'm just trying my hardest to wake up. And then you wake up and you like, ah! And then you, like, shout. It, dog, I, I used to hate having those, man. And since I know my girl, I think I had, like, a total, like, th three three times, maybe a few more. But even she said, like, when I have it, she'd be scared. She'd just be, like, rubbing me, like, trying to calm me down. Like, because she just know, like, that shit looks painful. She, she used to talk to me about it. But I couldn't really explain it. I hate having that shit. My bad. That shit kind of... Hit me because I feel bad for this person. I feel bad for this person, man. Yeah. 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 Damn, I just went on the rant there. My bad. Impossibly wide grins. And as I felt this tight pressure in my chest, which is common in sleep paralysis, mm. I started to feel like they were getting bigger or just getting closer, like they were all floating towards me. When my body finally permitted, I threw the sheets off of me and threw my pillows into the oh. middle of the room and screamed. But the pillows hid nothing as the four figures were gone and the horrible laughing had stopped. I had never experienced a hallucination like that and I have had sleep paralysis many times. I had to see my doctor the next day who prescribed me new medication. Since then, I've still had my share of night terrors. Bullshit, dog. Nothing even close to that. Oh, that one was bullshit, man. That's bull. And let me, let me tell you the reason why that one really, like, got me feeling bad for this person. The reason why, because like I said, I, I've experienced my fair share. I've never, I've never, the reason why it really get me, because I've never had hallucinations. I've never woke up and saw something there and to the point where I had to react and try to get rid of it. I've never had that. Mine always been in my dream. I see it. I'm struggling. Boom. Like, the, even like the time I told y'all, I woke up. I told, it's going to sound like I'm joking. But I'm dead serious. This was my, my sleep paralysis experience. Mine was the blade situation I told y'all about. When I woke up and it was, I saw a blade, but I didn't see him. I woke up. He punched me. I went back down. I woke up again. And it was basically like that. But I've never like woke up and in my room still saw this figure like, oh shit, I'm tripping out throw the pillow at it or whatever i've never had that and that's hearing that i was like yep that sounds painful as is dog and that's some bull ish ah man fuck that one hit me right there damn my bag get all emotional on you it's my bad i'm gonna wrap up the video though. i was gonna tell y'all the story time too the first time i got arrested it was dude, it was funny bro don't don't worry it ain't nothing crazy like i ain't out here living like that that ain't my lifestyle it ain't cool i, I never ever want to promote anything like that look i lived and i learned I'm such an amazing person now. I love me so much. I'm gonna tell y'all another video though, but bro, it, it's funny as shit. I go, yeah. <laughs> I'm out, though. <laughs>